this is a, me trying to go through examples 19.2 and 19.3 and this is the ordering of jobs as they come through the shop so we start out in example 19.2 uh, which is a listing of jobs that have to be processed through the job shop. Now the information that I have to, to have is you know, a name for each job and the processing time for each job and a due date when this job has to be or should be completed to be on time. So notice how each of these are measured. They're in days, so job A takes three days and it's eight days away from its due date. Job B takes nine days. It's 17 days away from its due date. All right, now our goal in, in, in this example is to order these jobs. Now, how do I do that? Well, we have in the notes and in the textbook uh, just a sequence, a listing of things that we could use to get some sort of an optimal time uh, through these job processes. Now, now, whether they will be optimal or not, unfortunately, this process is not like some sort of mathematical process we go through, out pops the optimum. So when you don't have a circumstance like that, what you use is things called decision rules. And your author gave a list of five different decision rules. We're gonna go through four of them in example 19.2 one of them in example 19.3. So the first one is, why don't we just set up the jobs first come, first serve? So these jobs are ordered already as first come, first serve. And so what do I have? Okay, I'm gonna do job one first. Uh, we gotta start constructing this thing called flow time. Well, what does that mean? Well, the flow time is gonna take me three days to get that first job completed and then it's going to take me three days plus nine days to get the second job completed and then 12 days plus five days so you can see it's just the cumulative sum of the uh, processing times as I work my way down through this list and this flow time will change as we work our way through different uh, scenarios and then I keep the due date that was given to us. And then I'm going to figure out, okay, well, what about the tardiness? And here's what I've got. I've, I've got uh, flow time minus due date or zero if the flow time minus the due date comes out negative. So I've constructed that in an if statement. And here's what I've said. I've said if the flow time minus the due date is non-negative, so greater than or equal to zero, then the number I'm going to put in is the flow time minus the due date. Okay. Or, if this is not true, I'm going to put in a zero. So here's what we see. We will not be tardy with job A. Uh, it will be done five days before we hit the due date and we can get rid of it and be done everybody on job A or that's receiving job A thinks you did a great job. So I can just move down this column comparing flow times and due dates. And you see that I, I, I get a list or cumulative effect of 40 days that we're tardy. Okay, so here we go. Things that I need. I'm going to construct three summary measures so that I can compare the different rules and see which one I like best. So here we go, total processing time, number of jobs. So for the total processing time, I need the sum of all the flow times. For the number of jobs, and notice I didn't use count because count only works when I'm counting numbers. I used count A, and what that does is really count everything that's in the highlighted cells. So count A, so I've got five jobs, and then I just divide total processing time by the number of jobs, and I get the average flow time. So there's one of my measurements. Next measurement. All right, I'm gonna take the sum of the tardy days. I've got 40 days tardy. The number of jobs, just like we had above, which means on average, I'm eight days late with every project. We don't like that. 
Next, total processing time. We did that one before. It's just the sum of all the flow times and days. Then this make span. Well, that's just the sum of the initial processing times. So that ratio gives me an average number of jobs in the work center. And so about 2.76 jobs are on average or constantly in my work center. Okay, so I have these three numbers, 18.8 .8 days, 8 days, and 2.76 jobs that really mean nothing yet because I need to compare it to something. Okay, so here we go. I am going to change my decision rule from first come, first serve to processing, uh, shortest processing times. Okay. Well, I, I know that I just copied down here, but let me show you how to get this copied. So I highlight what I need, copy, push copy, go where I want to put it. I'm going to go paste. I'm going to choose right here, keep source column widths and formatting. Okay. And I'm going to set this up as shortest processing times. All right, I don't have to do a lot of work. The, the, the work now becomes ordering. Oops, let me catch those two. I am going to sort, the custom sort, by processing time. And I want shortest, so I'm going to go from smallest to largest. Okay, now things that I've got to check. Um, it's funny that rearrangement is not going to change the fifth column of this table. That will never, we will have to go back and change, but this one we will, especially if A ever becomes not in the first slot. But we got lucky, A is still in the first slot, so this cumulative process is still at work. All right, I want to keep my formatting, so I'm going to format painter, paint it. Now, all these are, are unaffected, all of my summaries. So let's look and see what happened. Uh, process A is still on time. Process E is now on time. Uh, C is three days tardy. B is six days tardy. D is 16 days tardy. My average flow time has declined, as has my average tardiness. And then this uh, average number of jobs in a work center is declining as well. So decline is what we want. In all three of these summaries, decline is good. Okay. All right, I just followed that process with the earliest due date. Again, I copied, I ordered, I did have to change this column because A is no longer the top job. And what I did though this time is I early, I, I sorted on the earliest due date. So I have this column. And what happened? Well, my average flow time went up a little bit. My average tardiness went down. And my average number of jobs in the work center went up. So I have two goods, one bad. I'm sorry, one good, two bads, one good, two bads. Finally, I tried out the longest processing time. Again, I copied my table, just the last one, and I reordered based on processing time. So I reordered, processing time is here, and I want the longest processing time. So I started, D is going to be done first. D will get done on time, but that's the only one that's going to get done on time. Once again, I had to check this column so that I get this cumulative thing going correctly. Okay. Now, what happened? My average flow time went up. In fact, that's my worst, not almost the worst of my flow times. My average tardiness went way up. I'm not going to be choosing this longest processing time. And my average number of jobs in the work center also went up. So it looks like if these are my four orderings, it looks like I'm going to want probably the shortest processing time. 
side by side would be a better way to compare these, meaning I might want to put these three measures side by side and find out which has the best in the three measures. That's what I'm looking for as I look. Okay. So there's example 19.2. Uh, hopefully, uh, by the way, you should note your author has a mistake in this cell uh, on his last table. That's okay. I make mistakes. Your author made a mistake and it altered his analysis just a little bit. Uh, I will tell the author that that happened. They'll fix it for next time. But for right now, we just know and pat ourselves on the back for finding this error. So the uh, next example will be example 19.3, and it'll be a little bit shorter video.